It's finally time, baby. I never dreamed this day would come where one of these super OP white-haired pretty boys would actually get clapped like this. You already know who I'm talking about, that 99 defense, 99 offense, unbeatable, goofy as fuck, Satoru Gojo. You bet I'm on my hating. Shit, I'm half sure I manifested this shit. This shit finna turn me religious. Next, I'm gonna be one of those astrology girls finding my ops weaknesses with zodiac signs. I'ma jump straight into it now, so strap in. So, long story short, Gojo and his Pokemon master sidekick Ghetto have been on this protective payload babysitting mission. They've been protecting this chick with a 250,000 bounty on her head and she find herself too so I get it. I guess one of them accidentally used the snapchat map feature or something and revealed their location cause the Michael Jordan of bounty hunters my man Toji was just about to pull up. Now I know I told you this man Goju had 99 defense but I guess I was capping cause this man just gets straight up bleached by Toji. Straight knife through the back before Brody could even react. The whole squad is baffled. This is the first time they've seen Gojo take any damage. No, we fuck. Don't tell me your blood armor ran out now. Gojo is looking hella gobblesmacked, but of course he tries to play it off and act all cool. Man can't be getting caught lacking this baddie from the baddie. Now the battle starts and Kito launches this disgusting worm thingy towards Toji, ready to gobble him up, and then he goes to rest Gojo. But nah, he gotta act cool and starts explaining some magical mumbo jumbo excuses for why he got caught lacking like that but he's fine now so he's ready for his get back of course the worm got sliced up in a second and toji is not going to be outmatched in the ugliest pet competition with ghetto because he pulls out his own slug and that thing's ugly as fuck that thing right there is proof that there's no god got me shaking in my boots just by looking at that thing's face gojo tries to catch toji with his attack but it just dashes away and that shit looks like fucking teleporting the speed difference is just too big it's like putting prime usain bolt in a running competition against james harden before for a trade. That shit's unfair. Now we learn that our guy Toji doesn't even have any of this cursed energy but he has a heavenly restriction, meaning he's superhuman. He's basically like Captain America if he took a hundred more doses of that super soldier serum. He tries to go for the kill shot but Goju had to hit him with the no look cool pose and uses his cursed energy guy, technique to send this man flying guy. through whole ass buildings. <laughs> Unfortunately, when Gojo tries to hit him with the monologue, Toji's already got away, ready to attack again. He found out Gojo's greatest weakness, which is that man's got no bag. He's been spamming the same step back three infinity the whole show. Gojo tries to get ahead of it though and starts stealing. My man copies Pain's move Shinra Tensei from Naruto almost exactly, except on a baby scale. He thinks he's safe until Toji launches the worst thing possible at Gojo, a swarm of insects. Gojo is looking absolutely baffled, gobblesmacked, led astray, bamboozled. Toji takes the chance for the upset of a lifetime and comes from behind. Now, Toji is about to run one of the most disrespectful fates of all time, so strap in. First, he stabs Gojo straight to the neck through his barrier. He not gonna listen to any more one-liners from this guy. Next, he slices the knife through his chest, cuts his left leg four times doing his best Gordon Ramsay impression. This man Gojo is literally getting cooked. He dodges, hits him with a sweep kick and smashes his head to the ground with another knife to finish the fade. This leaves Gojo absolutely obliterated. Man is gone. You'd think Toji was done after killing the most powerful character in the show, but no, man's ready for the Chuchuchu Kaisen sweep. Ghetto is in the process of trying to resup this baddie when... This man Toji is ruthless. Brody thought he was just about to secure the bag when this guy pulls up and kills the girl, so he's understandably mad. He pulls out all his most powerful Pokemon and I'm sitting here like bro. You just heard this man say he killed Gojo, so what chance do you think you got with him? That's like Ben Simmons seeing someone clap Michael Jordan and being like, yeah I can take him. Like bro you can't. But I mean maybe I'm wrong, so let's see. Ghetto starts the fight with sending his knock of Rayquaza after Ghetto. Toji tries to finish the fight quickly with the clock. Ghetto manages to do a clean block by sacrificing his pet squid. That's two of his six Pokemon already down. If this keeps up bro is gonna run out. It seems like the dragon did nothing to Toji, but Ghetto just keeps spamming and spawns the dragon again. Then he fires these little laser beams, fucking crystal pebbles, as if they're gonna do anything. Toji dodges them like light work. The dragon gets clapped again, and now you know that thing's not coming out anymore. Ghetto tries to hit bro with a domain expansion, but Toji nope. just slices through that shit. 
as a last-ditch effort, Ghetto swallows his pride and tries to absorb that ugly ass slug. But even that somehow fails. At this point, you know Bro is frustrated. He's gone through his entire back and hasn't even been able to scratch this man. All that effort for nothing. Even Tony Stark got at least a drop of blood. But now it's time for Tochi to clap back and he gives Ghetto that loopy chest treatment. And then kicks him away. In one second he ended this man's whole career. This man Toji is on a run. He spun the block and killed all three of them. Then he just goes to retrieve the bounty for that girl and that's it, right? Well not exactly. Brody was on his way to buy some new legendary gear or something. But little does he know while he was busy, Gojo was fighting for his life in the gulag. If he were to go out like that, his legacy would be utterly squandered. He needed that Boston Game 6 LeBron James performance. Luckily Gojo managed to clutch up in the gulag and now he spun back for one of the most legendary getbacks of all time. No, for real, that can't be you again. <laughs> What's up, bitch? You should've gone for the head. Gojo got some weird ass enlightenment from his near death experience. And now he's also high, cause why not? He's trying to get that street cred back to prove he still got that dog in him. Doji goes for the same dash attack, but this time Gojo just weaves out of the way like he's Michael Jackson. He fires this red sphere at Doji, and had he not managed to block that, He'd be straight cinders now. He gets smashed into another building, but Bro clearly took some damage this time. He knows this man Gojo ain't the same as when they last fought, so he starts stretching. This shit's getting serious now. Gojo goes all tryhard mode and tries to use these chain attacks, but Gojo's dodging stats went from 0 to 100. And he's just dodging everything now. He pulls out one of the most disrespectful moves of all time and just starts dancing in the air mid fight. Then we find out what his great revelation from Beyond the Grave was. It was that if he combines his blue attack and red attack, it creates purple. Like damn, that's almost kindergarten level IQ. Next he's gonna memorize the whole color wheel and the months too. She. And at this point, there isn't anything that Doji can do. He fires off the purple attack and this is just sad man. Finally someone got close to packing up one of these super OP pretty boys. And this is the result. Gojo gives him that ace treatment, disintegrating a third of his body and making him look like someone took a big old bite out of him. And that's how Gojo proved he's still him. I'ma keep hating though, so hopefully Sukuna can swoop in and finish what Toshi started. Anyways, I'm done, so see ya.